Um, before we get out of here, a couple of quick questions before we get out of here, brother. You talked about the dream world and you talked about sleep. In terms of dream seven, um, we secrete this hormone called melatonin at night. Now, this, mel this melatonin is tied into our circadian rhythm, it's tied into this, the sleep, um, the wake sleep cycle. And it could do a lot of repairing to our body at night. It's very important at night when we're asleep for uh, the melatonin and what it does to our body, our DNA and everything. My question to you, if we're talking about the occult realm seven, what's more important for us? Do you think is there is something more important in terms of melatonin us using it to repair our body while it's sleep or us using it for magical purposes while we're awake at nighttime, the witching hour, staying awake, meditating, meditating, doing spells. So is melatonin more important when we're awake doing this magic or is it more important for us to be asleep and it's repairing this avatar we have, Seven? Well, I love to answer these questions with the old yeah. time both. You know what I mean? But okay, so let's just imagine what's actually happening. So first of all, if you don't make it to bed at a certain time, then you actually don't get the melatonin going through the proper process, right? Mm -hmm. And so technically then if you're staying up all night and you're doing that through an aesthetic, as we would call it, like, you know, you're mm -hmm. either building up energy or something like that, then it has to then be related technically to Kundalini or technically to the energetic field that you're rising, right? So if you're in these meditations, what you're really doing is you're raising the energy and this is why it's good to be grounded and then you can amplify. And then technically, you know, from everything that I've learned and seen and practiced myself, you don't actually have to focus so much on what you're trying to manifest because that has a tendency to take you out of the frequency that is necessary to manifest. Uh, oftentimes, any real manifester is going to encode what they're manifesting into a symbol, especially if it's very complicated, because it's easier to focus just directly on the symbol. And then, as I mentioned in the previous conversation, that you would then have an altar that actually just consisted of these different symbols. And if somebody saw your altar, they would have no clue of what was going on. Uh, but you do. And every time you put something on your altar, you can always visualize it in your mind. So if you're bringing success to your company, you would take your company logo and put it onto something that could resonate uh, at the base layer wood, definitely not plastic, higher layers, metal, et cetera. The higher the metal, the higher resonance, then the more vibration. And then you would actually be able to use that as a, as a resonance field, like a Buddha statue or brass Buddha statue is a resonance field. And then you need to amplify it. The amplification is that's why you're breathing because you're bringing up the coil or the Kundalini and then you're electric at that stage. So even your projections and also even touching things charges things. So generally there's a process of charging. It's the same way that logos are made uh, by, you know, occult companies, but you have to, you charge the object. And again, they negatively charge because they kill things. And that's why I tell people, you know, avoid traditions where you're killing things because you're negatively charging whatever you're doing. And that is necromancy uh, straight up. And that's all the jackal and all that. They practice necromancy. They're all into the dead and manipulating the dead and the ghouls and the zombie and all that kind of stuff. And it's just like, okay, but I tried to give you, I tried to give you uh, 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 filet mignon yet you want to eat maggots. That's basically what it's like, right? So you work when you're working with life, life has abundance. So because what happens is, is that when even when you're being given money, quote unquote, for death, which is the agreement and the arrangement that many people are making when they're taking the life of something and sending up, especially chickens and sending up this little weak spirit to answer this prayer to this sky God, right? Which is only on that first layer of the sky. What ends up happening is it's like a monkey's paw. So you reap what you sow. Every time you do something that you know is got negativity attached to it, expect it. It's the reason why that you generally have to watch your back or something stupid happens or wowed or something gets broke or somebody gets hurt. And it's because you could have a wake of negative reflux current just headed your way for consistently practicing in things that are abhorred. They don't make sense. That's why they call them abhorred because they just don't make any common sense. You would have to actually be ignorant to do it. So then, especially when you can surround yourself with life. So in this life process, you're building energy, right? You don't need anything else's energy. You got more than enough. In fact, the situation is handling all the energy on the spiritual plane. So the reality is as you can bring your energy up more, your field becomes electric. 
And then your consciousness already knows how to divert that energy into manifesting the first stages, like a baby, the first stages of the seed germ and nurture the seed germ of what it takes to birth something. But also remember anything new that you're bringing and you're birthing, you should always keep it very private. This is why this thing is always about a privacy with your manifestations and things like that until they're well-developed. This is very similar to that. You don't let everybody hold your newborn baby until it's well-developed. So what happens is, is that if you bring out your, your ideas, your fresh newborn ideas to others, and they, they can kill that idea. Sometimes you think that people are really in your corner and you're telling them about like, you know, something that you haven't even done yet or something that's new. And they could be in their mind, like, if he gets that, like, you know, sometimes you can tell your girlfriend, like, I want this new car. And then she could be like, if he gets that, <laughs> he's going to be leaving me. So in her mind, she's like, I hope he don't get that car. But she smiled. Oh, I hope you get it, girl. You know what I mean? That kind of stuff is like the basics of 101. So building energy, which is through breathing, whole body breathing will take you into another dimension. You don't even need these DMTs and all that kind of stuff. Those are just icings on top, mm -hmm. caveats. I'm about to go in the elevator and come back. But truly, the breathing is, is the key. Uh, and obviously, um, um, the flexibility, right? So the body um, yoga is, is, is key. Uh, it's different things that make you more flexible, right? You don't have to do it all the time, uh, but it is good to practice. Your insulation, this is, as the energy is running through you, it is your nervous system that it's actually running through. If you want to understand what the as below or physical aspect of what your, your energy system is, is your nervous system. So if your nervous system is like your, so if your piping is thin, that's the easiest way to put it. If your piping is thin, then you can rupture one of your energetic lines. This causes blockage. This causes all types of issues. So Learning how and, and, and basically going slow with yourself, because really what you're doing is you're taking a baby Kundalini, which everybody has one, and then you're raising that Kundalini. That's why I say raise it, but it's more like you're raising it. And what you teach it is what it learns. And if it, once it gets to a certain size, like a child, there ain't going to be no more time for learning. It is now going to act out what you taught it. So that's why the inverted, when they're training their Kundalini, their Kundalini goes down first. It doesn't go up. So it basically gets the experience of like totally like darkness, not having light, not being able to deal with all of the subconscious and all that. And it becomes very damaged and sometimes stuck down there. And so most of those people, they move from the lower chakras and I find them to be very quote unquote negative versus the ones who are moving up here. You know, you got to cycle the whole thing because they can get lodged in any of this. And when it get lodges in here, this is the person that is like, they just, you know, they, you, they, you can't tell them anything. <laughs> like they're just all high and mighty and all this kind of stuff. And, but all of it is just like, it's not grounded. Right. So that's how your energy system works. So insulating that system, getting that breath going on, realizing that you don't meet meditation is a median. It's the middle zone. It's like the tip of the wave. That's why I say there's a slight surplus there. So it's the tip of the wave, but not falling off or falling back so you know how on a wave you can either go fall over the wave or you can miss the wave <laughs> right you need to be right on the tip and that's what lucid dreaming or right on that point where you tilted the board a little before that's what lucid dreaming is that's also what meditation is technically when you're getting to that phase and manifestation is when you're getting to that phase so yeah uh, the melody is just a component. It works with the dreams really well. It strengthens the body. And when you miss it, like going out at the club and all of that, it degrades your, your feel degrades over time. Like I personally, like even these shows, like these are the only nights that I can really do like the late night ride out. Yeah, for Friday you know night. I mean? No, Saturday night. No, it's, I'm, I'm so confused right yeah. now. I don't know. We what I'm, I don't, I'm delusional right now. Minutes. Yeah, we, you 30 minutes from now. <laughs> oh man! Well, actually, no, you're yeah. already on that side of things. That's yeah, yeah. Next question, seven. Another question pertaining to dreams. I want to ask you, my brother, is having dreams sometimes a good thing? No, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Is having bad dreams sometimes a good thing? Why would Brother Rich ask is having bad dreams a good thing? Well, because we build up karma uh, with our thoughts. 
seven. And based on our thoughts, things are going to come to us. You know, our, our, our vibration, things will come to us based on that. With bad dreams, my question is, they say the mind doesn't know the difference between imagination and reality. Well, maybe the mind doesn't know the difference between a dream and reality. So when you have a bad dream, does that cancel out all that bad shit you done thought? You had this dream. You got in a car accident a dream. Boom, you eliminated the karma in that dream. Now you're good to go in this realm. Talk to me, like Seven. you laughing. I like Woo. that. You know, I'm, I'm yeah. not going to repeat that because I like that idea. I love to dump off any kind of negativity somewhere else beside in my prime, right? Like I said in the world. So I, I actually really like that, to be honest. I'll ponder Ooh, it later on. That was a good one, saying, huh? that was it good runs one. in the mechanics of what I'd be, what I'd be playing around with for sure. Yeah. And, and I say for, on the other note that, man, I find that when I come out of a bad dream, ah, oh, man, I'm so happy to get this next opportunity. So in many ways, I, yeah. I mean, there's some dreams that it's just like, you know, it, it, it's straight madness. And sometimes I'd be looking at the Wi-Fi and I'd say, I'd be like, man, I wonder <laughs> if this Wi-Fi, <laughs> you know what I mean? We turn this off. But actually, a lot, I actually find it to be more of a component of the moon uh, because, you know, where I even live, I you know, if the moon is full, like it literally will light up everything. And it's kind of interesting that the role that the moon plays even in nature too, because like for many animals, moon, full moon is like the time to be out. It's like their party time, right? And so within this, I, I feel like that bad dreams can in one way be instrumental for showing you or giving you the feeling of having another opportunity to correct some things in life. I know many have woken out of dreams and been like really grateful that what they saw in the dream didn't happen. Um, on another note, very negative dreams can, you know, kind of ride with you. You know, how, have you ever woke up out of one of them dreams and it's just kind of like on your back? Oh, it's yeah. just almost like you're carrying this vibe of the dream world because it, the essence of it was just so like surreal in a way. And uh, but I also will say that that's a very because, you know, I haven't really pondered it the way that you just mentioned it. But I believe that it's very plausible that. You know, if something happens over there, it prevents it from happening here and you went through it already. And, you know, that could potentially be a way of clearing uh, circumstances and situations from actually happening in this reality beforehand, because then it's kind of like, oh, that already happened. Right, so, right, right. You know, so yeah, you know, that's as much as I could give on that. But yeah. I think that that's, that's a good insight right there.